invention of the indoor flush toilet, bathrooms were a collection of community outhouses, chamber pots, and sometimes just a hole in the ground. Primitive trenches with a constant stream of water to carry away waste are called latrines, and they've been around for thousands of years around the world. Once castles came around, people used something called a garderobe, which was basically a small closet jutting out the side of a castle wall. It had a bench with a hole so that waste could drop down out of the castle onto the ground or into a moat. These garderobes were very stinky and not very clean. Enter the godson of Queen Elizabeth I, Sir John Harrington. In 1596, Harrington decided he couldn't stand the smell anymore and decided he would take matters into his own hands. So Harrington came up with the idea for the Ajax. It was a device that looked and worked much like our modern toilets today. It had a seat, a small handle, and a hole for the waste to go down. When the handle was turned, it would flood the bowl with water from a tank that would sweep everything down into a cesspool underneath the house. Harrington invited the Queen over to his house to show off his fancy new invention. And she was impressed. So impressed, in fact, that she had an Ajax installed in one of her castles. But most people at the time stuck to chamber pots and outhouses. First off, it was expensive and inconvenient to install the Ajax. Putting it in your house meant renovating the entire cottage, and the newfangled bathroom was still extremely smelly. A bit like having a porta potty in your living room. In 1775, Scottish inventor Alexander Cumming took a swipe at improving the Ajax. Instead of poop and pee going straight down, Cumming bent the waste pipe into an S shape. The S-bend trap prevented stinky smells from re-entering the house and reduced the amount of water splashing out. He also created a mechanism for water to refill for the toilet's next user. Early in the 1800s, the water tank was moved above the toilet and attached with a chain pull, allowing faster flushing. Buildings were built with pipes for personal use, and cities began planning sewer systems that allowed for waste to be taken away to prevent illness and disease. One of the most famous toilet titans of the 19th century was Thomas P. Crapper. No, he didn't invent the toilet, nor is his last name related to another word for poop. But he made toilets accessible and slapped his name on toilets worldwide. What Crapper did invent was the float valve, a plug inside the water tank that keeps the toilet bowl from overflowing. Nifty! By the 1900s, toilets started to become an at-home essential. To give an idea, in 1940, about half of US households had a toilet, or even running water. But by 1990, around 99% of homes in America had at least one indoor bathroom. And toilets kept improving. Starting in the 1980s, Japan became the undisputed leader in cutting-edge toilet tech. The touch-free flush, the heated seat, even public toilets that play music, so you don't have to hear other people's... From the 1990s to today, toilets that reduce water usage are the main focus. By limiting just how much water is needed to flush, toilets can conserve water and be kinder to the earth. And there's one more thing we don't want to hold in. Having a toilet in your house when you've got to go is a privilege. Over 60% of the world's population, that's 4.5 billion people, don't have a toilet at home. Every time we flush the toilet, our waste and bacteria, the stuff that gets us sick, are taken away and disposed of safely. For those without a bathroom, illness and disease are more common. So next time you wipe, don't take it for granted.